what I will be talking about now is how you work with a designer and make sure that you get the deliverables that you would like. So with that, let's just jump into it and start learning some tips and tricks for how you work with your designer. Before we kick it off and hand out the task, I would like to talk a bit about balancing design freedom versus constraints, because one can go wrong in both directions here. So too much freedom for the designer can be actually difficult to work with, because there's just too many possibilities that one could start working on. And also too much freedom could lead the designer to create things that you did not expect or really want for your product. So that is the bad side of too much freedom, but then on the other hand, too many constraints, that can lead the designer to being unable to explore some promising ideas. So it's about finding a good balance here. And to achieve this balance, I advise you to only include constraints in your project brief that you're absolutely certain about. So for example, let's imagine that you're creating a shoe rack. And maybe in your mind, this shoe rack should already be made out of bamboo. However, if there has been nothing in your customer research that has been indicating that it must be made out of bamboo, then I would leave that up to the designer to decide. Maybe I would mention that I have been thinking about making the shoe rack out of bamboo, but I would not put it down as a fixed requirement because there is a risk or rather a chance that the designer actually knows something about the bamboo material that you don't know, which makes it a bad choice for your design. And if you would put it down as a fixed requirement, then the designer would likely just use that material and not tell you about those negative aspects that they know about. Okay, so that was about balancing design freedom versus constraints. And uh, now let's go ahead and set up the task and get the industrial designers working on our concepts. And uh, to get them working, we need to share the following information with them. We need to share the project brief, the mood board and the requirement specification. And uh, if you haven't created this document yet, then uh, I really advise you to go back to our lesson on the project brief and uh, create one. And then also apart from the project brief, you should share with them any additional information that you have gathered from customer research. So if your customer research had some interesting finding, let the designer know so that they will be able to implement that into their concepts. And uh, as mentioned in previous lessons, do remember to sign an NDA before discussing anything that you would like to keep confidential. Okay, so then with the project brief and the additional information on customer research, the designers will be able to start working. But before you kick it off and let them get going, you need to define timelines. Because assignments, they really have a tendency to bloat in proportion to the amount of time that you give them. So if you have a very far off deadline or no deadline at all, then the concept creation phase will likely take much, much longer than actually needed. And for this task, I'd say that one to one and a half weeks should be enough to return two concepts for your product. And uh, if the designers uh, require way, way more than that, then just clarify that right now we're only looking for some very rough ideas around functionality and aesthetics, and we are not looking for actually a functional design. Then in terms of billable hours, I would say that 15 hours per concept is quite reasonable. And the reason for why we are giving the designers quite a lot more time than is actually billable, so the reason for why we are giving them one and a half weeks to complete the task, is uh, multifold. So first off, in my experience as a designer, I like to take some time and digest different ideas, so these billable hours might be spread out across many days. So I might work two hours the first day, then sleep on an idea, come up with another idea the next day, and uh, work like that. The second reason is that many times the designers will already have existing contracts with other clients, so they need to fit your work into their schedule. So uh, just give them one and a half weeks and then see what they come up with. And then more in general around deadlines, so not just for industrial designers, but any freelancer really, I would try to keep the deadlines tight, but within reason, of course. And then I would also always, always ask the freelancer to accept a proposed deadline. So that way, if they do accept, they are personally committed to this uh, timeline and to keeping their word. So uh, that's a bit about timelines. And now let's go ahead and talk about red flags. And uh, red flags, those are things that for me could be instant deal breakers when working with an industrial designer. And uh, some of those red flags that I would like to highlight are number one, that they break timelines, they break deadlines. And uh, this would not just be for industrial designers, but this would be for any freelancer that I collaborate with really. Because uh, no matter how good they are, 
if they can't keep a timeline, if I can't count on them, then that's a really bad thing. And then uh, number two, specific for industrial designers, is that they have no clue about how things will be manufactured. And uh, this is a really dangerous one because that could mean that you're working with an industrial designer who's too conceptual and will create maybe some very nice looking renderings and some nice looking sketches. But then once you get to the design for manufacturing phase, you will encounter a lot, a lot of problems for actually getting this product made. And uh, that's bad because you lose both time and you lose money in having to hire another designer. And then number three as a red flag for industrial designers would be that they go way outside the requirement brief without any good reason or that they simply fail to fulfill the requirements in the brief. So when they present the concepts, you need to always check that the concepts presented connect back to what you actually asked for. And uh, with that, you should have everything you need to get started. So feel free to set your designers on to generating some concepts and presenting them as either sketches or renderings. And then once you have received these concepts, you do need to evaluate them. And a lot of the evaluation you can do yourself, such as checking how the concepts relate back to the project brief, checking how you like the visuals of the concept, you can do yourself as well. But some other things we need a mechanical engineer for. So for example, you, unless you are an engineer, won't be able to say with certainty if something can be manufactured at a reasonable cost. So with that, good luck, and I'll see you in the next lesson once you have your concepts ready.